Hello and welcome back to another episode of our Microsoft OneNote U TeacherCast University course. We're learning all about how to use Microsoft OneNote in your classroom. I'm joined today by Mike and Ari. And Mike, today we're going to be talking a little bit about OneNote and how teachers are using it to not only add stuff to their OneNote, but also search for it. What are we going to be learning about today? Yeah, today we're going to be talking a little bit about tagging and organizing in OneNote. And we're also going to be having things about how do you integrate Outlook into OneNote for things like meeting notes or sending emails to OneNote so you can capture and organize a lot of those important things that we know teachers have going on every day. So we'll show a little bit of both. And that's important because teachers are using OneNote as kind of their digital inbox. Instead of having thousands of emails, they're now able to send stuff to OneNote, aren't they? Yeah. And actually the staff notebook, which is something that we came out with just a couple of months ago, we're seeing that teachers, principals, superintendents, curriculum developers, all those different education personas are really liking to use the Outlook integration features, like you said, to organize everything in one place. Because through our research, we found a lot of teachers and principals spend a lot of time just searching for emails and attachments and threads and bits and pieces of things. So just putting it all in OneNote, it's a big time saver. Let's take a look at how this works. Okay, so here we are in OneNote. And what I'm gonna show here is a staff scenario for a teacher. So we do know that teachers have a staff meeting every so often, and so do principals and curriculum developers and superintendents. So because OneNote's part of Office, what we can do here is we have Outlook integration. And I'm gonna drop the meeting details right here, and I'm gonna scroll down. This is actually reading my whole Outlook calendar right here. And I'm gonna choose the weekly staff meeting, and it's gonna pull this in on the page automatically. And you can see that staff meeting had a PDF and a PowerPoint attached to it. It's got all the meeting information and it has all the participants right here listed. And now I can start taking notes. So start taking notes and I'm down here at the bottom of the page. And again, I can give myself more paper because I have infinite paper. Now, what if I had a question? So what's nice is if I'm taking notes, I can go to my tags feature right here and I have lots of choices, but I'm gonna flag this as a question and see how I put a little purple question mark there. And this part is important. And so again, I can go and here's an important tag. Little hotkey, control two if I want. And here are more notes. Here is a custom thing. So we do know that teachers and lots of other people like to customize tags. So we've got a bunch of options here, websites, ideas, passwords, sourcing. I can go and customize a tag too. So if I wanna add a brand new tag, maybe I've got the teacher cast tag, a special tag for all my good teacher cast stuff. And I want a custom icon for that. And I can choose, maybe I'll make a smiley face. My smiley face teacher cast. And every time I do that, I wanna highlight it in green. So there's my teacher cast tag. And you can see right here, it added it to my tagging list. I hit OK. So now, if I want my teacher cast tag, I just go up here and look at that. It makes a smiley face with the green. So every time I've got something for teacher cast, you know, I can just go, chink, there's my custom tag. And so what's nice is you can start marking up your notes across all of your notebooks and everywhere you go. And then we have the find tag feature. Um, and so to find all my tags, I just click this. Now it searches across all my stuff and I can, I can filter this, but you can see all these tags on the right-hand side. And so you can see I've got all types of custom tags I've made. I've tagged pieces of content here. I've got presentation tags. I have ideas. You know, they're all my little questions. And I click on that tag, it jumps me right to the part where it was tagged. So here you can see a bunch of rich tags. I can jump around my notebook just by clicking on tags. And if I wanna find, the tag for research, research Helen Keller. There we go, it jumps it and it highlights it automatically. So what's really nice is again, that allows you to very quickly, it's just a big time saver. Very quickly then, you can jump and just find all the stuff that you need to find with your tags. And related to that, the last one that I like to show, and this is a, a classic one, but I'll save the best for last. You can yield to-dos. So if you want that checkbox, I can just see my to-do tag and there it is, I can check it off check it on. So a nice little way to keep track of things with tags. Now, the other part we have with Outlook integration is sending emails into OneNote. So I have important emails. We hear a lot of principals say things like, well, I spend a lot of my time in the day finding mails and forwarding mails and different mails that got split and different attachments. 
So now I can go into OneNote and I've got an email here and you can see it's highlighted. There's this OneNote button. So when I click the OneNote button, that's gonna pop a dialogue that says, where do you wanna put this email? So I can choose my staff meeting notes section because that's the one I'm in right now and hit okay. And it's gonna pop me right back into Outlook or into OneNote. And there it is, it sent the whole mail, has the attachment. So any of those really important policy mails or procedure mails or things where I want everybody to know that the PTA meeting is coming up and here's the attachment, here's the map, here's all the things we need. I can just send those mails right into OneNote. And kind of related to that is when I want to email out my notes for people who might not have OneNote, not everybody has OneNote, obviously, I can click email page. And with that Outlook integration, when I click the email page button, it's going to take all the notes on my current page and pop them right into an Outlook email. And look at that, it's automatically addressed to all the people who are in that meeting, because we know who was in the meeting. It adds the attachments, it gives it a title. And all I have to do is send my mail. There's my notes, I can send it out really quickly and really easily. So that's just a sampling of how we think teachers and staff can be productive themselves. The other quick one I wanna show is the students because we have these class notebooks and we have the same concepts where I've got all these tags and maybe students have marked up, maybe they have questions, maybe they're confused. The teacher can just do find tags and very quickly scan across all that class notebook of all their students and find all the questions that people are asking. So I can even tag ink. See this little need help here. If I click that, it takes me right to the kid who wrote need help with a little question mark. Or I have a question and it jumps me to that kid who has a question. So I can very quickly get a sense in my class, what's happening, what are people doing, who needs help, who needs feedback. So that's just another scenario where we see teachers and students interacting in really interesting ways and they can give real-time feedback in those ways. Mike, can you give us some good advice on how to tag things? I mean, if you have a, a, a chapter that you're looking at, what do you want to tag? Are you, are you tagging keywords? Are you tagging common words? Are you just tagging it as the topic of the paragraph? What should we do? Because I find whenever I'm tagging things, I overdo it. And then I have a million tags for a very small amount of content. What do you suggest? Well, I, I think it's a lot like highlighting. It's the same concept where some people do lots of highlighting. They highlight everything. Some people go a little more uh, loosey-goosey in terms of here and there. What I like to think is, if you think about tags, what is the type of thing that you're going to find most important? Like, I think some of them are really natural. When you have questions, it's really easy to just use that question mark. Now, important, again, that can be overdone. I would say if you star everything is important, well, then important is going to mean less. Uh, but there's nice things like if you have a source to an article, we've got a lot of built-in tags. So sourcing articles, we've got fun ones like music to listen to or website to visit. But I think thinking about it in a category way is really helpful because then when you use this find tags functionality, like I show here, you can actually sort by tag name, by section, by date. And so I've found the categories aspect and thinking about it that way is really nice. Like here's an idea or here's important. And so using the way that we we build in for that searching and filtering and sorting is really helpful in, in the way people are doing things. Now, going back to your category tag of needs help with that handwriting, is that only pointing to that one specific incident or can I write needs help on another page or another notebook and it knows where to find both of those things? How does that work with handwriting? Well, as long as you put the tag right next to the handwriting, we actually, what's nice is right here, um, I can go and add important next to that. Um, and, and then it'll, it'll tag that as well. So I can have in here, I added a important as well as a question mark. So as long as you put the tag right next to the handwriting, one that is smart enough to automatically sync those two things together, just like we did with the need help. Mike, it's certainly nice to see that OneNote is not only easy to create things with, but also you can keep your metadata organized and be more productive with it. How are teachers using this metadata to their advantage? Well, one thing that we're seeing in our class notebooks, and we'll be talking about those a little bit later, in the class notebooks, we've seen ways that teachers are using tags to actually structure what kids are turning in and what they're not turning in and what's ready to be looked at and what's not. And we've got these really interesting cases where, for example, the teacher might use, I'll just use the teacher cast one, maybe the smiley face is a tag meaning this is ready to be turned in. And so then a teacher can search across all the assignments and sort of create little workflows with tags. 
And so we have seen a bunch of really creative usage by teachers using tags in ways that tell them what's ready to be turned in, what's finished, what's not finished, what needs help. And so we've seen that be really, really useful in the class setting. But in the staff setting, like I said before, even the basics, I mean, just the things around staff notebooks and who has to-do items and who's following up on what and important versus question, all those things are actually very powerful just in your day-to-day -day staff meetings and organizational. Um, because you know it's not just a teaching thing. I think at Microsoft or lots of companies, just anytime you're trying to stay organized and follow up on things, it's just a really useful way to do it. Mike, thank you so much for sharing all this great information about OneNote. Join us next time for another video from TeacherCast University's online course on Microsoft OneNote.